the gear, the previously consumed beer, and the new one in front of us from Dogfish Head Craft Brewery out of Milton, Delaware, U.S. of A. Yay, yay! So you know what time it is. It's time for DJ to go loco! That's right, guys, we're going local yet again with another Dogfish Head beer. And today we have a new-ish beer from them. Why do I say newish? Because it's a riff on a beer that was created in the past. That's right. What beer is it you say? It is their Fruitful Ford. Now, this is based on the Ford, but now it's got a whole ton of fruit in it. Then what kind of beer is it that this, you know, ton of fruit has been put into? It's a Belgian Strong Ale. It's a limited serving. It clocks in between 15 and 18%, though I hear tell it is 18% this go, and 50 IBUs. Now, you hear me talk about a crap ton of Hmm, yes, fruit in it. So what are they using? Before, in the original fort, they only used raspberries and a whole, like, truckload of them. But this time, they're using boysenberries, raspberries, blackberries, and elderberries. And to amp it up a little more, they're adding Munich malt into the mash bill this time. So, you know what? That sounds pretty freaking awesome to me. So it is time to pop the warning label sort of dogfish head crown on the bottle of Fruitful Fort here. Get in our lovely brandy snifter because when I've had Fort in the past when it's fresh, it's quite brandy-like, so I figured this would do it tonight. So you know what? Let's stop flapping our gums. Hell yeah, crack the top. Boom, big hiss off the top. Tons of cannon smoke rising to the occasion. And of course, obsessively collectible dogfish head warning crown. Man. Woo, I can smell the berries wafting off the top of this. Hell yes. Mmm. I have earned this beer 110% this week. It was a real killer. Drove over 800 miles. Yeah. Enough said, right? Hell yeah. So, the workout's been gotten on. Kid events are done. And it's time for me to drink. Let's talk about the appearance of Fruitful Fort. It's a lovely, lovely deep garnet color. It may look even black to you on camera. We had about a quarter finger of head. That's faded. These big dogfish head beers, a lot of times the head fades quick down to a ring of bubbles, but where they fade off on, hmm, you know, sort of bubbles and glass lacing, there are tons and tons of alcohol lace just clawing down the inside of this glass when I swirl it. Take a look at that beauty. Mm, mm, mm. It's pretty, but with all that fruit in there and the Munich malt now too, it better smell good. So let's dive in for the aroma. Woo, big, big berry presence. I'm getting the raspberry. I can't remember what boysenberry smell like and I remember blackberries. I'm getting some darker fruit aromas than I got before. It smells almost like black raspberries with blueberry comboed. Little hit of booze. Um, more breadiness in the aroma than I remember Ford having. Now, I can say this with authority because the other day I was at a, a beer shop and they had what was left the dregs of a kicked keg of 2015 Ford. And this aroma smells a little more malt and sweet forward than that Ford that he'd even cellared in a keg for three years at time of consumption um, than this beer has. Some chocolatey sort of notes almost. Almost like a vanilla hint as well. Some floral aromas. And some nice belgian -y sort of yeast esters. Smells pretty damn delicious. Let's dive in. Cheers! Mmm, man. Very, very fruity. Mmm. That brandy snifter was a good call very brandy or sherry-like in some ways. The sherry-like sweetness and thick, very viscous palate coating beer. Mm. Right up in front, you get a kick of semi-sweet berries. It's natural fruit tasting. It doesn't taste like, you know, fake, like junk or anything like that. Really right up in front, raspberry, blueberry, black raspberry kind of taste going on. Really a lot like black raspberry to me. Mm. The alcohol on this beer is a little more tamed than I remember Fort being. I'm getting tons of warming in the chest, but it's not phenolic tasting. It's got, it tastes like a liqueur and like the alcohol in the flavor that you get when you're drinking like say raspberry liqueur or a real fruit liqueur, nothing like fake. That's the taste that this has. Um, there's a little bit of breadiness. I suspect that's from the Munich malt. If you use a whole ton of Munich malt, like, say, within uh, Pumpkin, mm -hmm. you get that bready graham crackery thing. This isn't to that point, but it has definitely more of a breadiness. Some of those Belgian yeast esters in there. It's a thick, heavy mouth coating beer, but it's got a light, dry finish to it. There's some 
nice fruit wine taste. I made a raspberry wine not that long ago, and this reminds me in some ways of that raspberry wine, of that dry, sort of vinous fruit wine kind of finish. If you ever have like a heavy, like, I'm not talking grape or anything, all right, because of course grapes are fruit, right? But if you use like a cherry or a raspberry or blueberry, they have their own kind of dry, mm, that like almost, it's hard to describe that dry, but heavy fruit flavored finish more than some than you get from grapes sometimes. But man, super tasty beer, definite cellar potential, very warming in the chest, but not boozy. Um, as regular for it was pretty damn boozy when it was fresh. Maybe that malt twist is what did it. I can't say that 100%, but I can, am telling you, since I drank regular for it just a couple days ago at this time, or actually, shit, a day ago at this time of recording, uh, the time is passing me by right now, this is a solid, super solid beer. A little bit hot for some people, I think. If you're not used to drinking high-gravity beers, you may be like, man, this is the worst thing I ever put in my drink hole. That's fine. If you bought more than one bottle, pff, just send them to me. I'll drink it for you, no problem. I'll call up Johnny the Stun Drinker or UBT, and I know they'll help me out. So, anyway, I'm waffling on. That's what I do. Hmm. Let's grade this beer. At time of recording, since it's brandy new, um, Beer Advocate is giving this 3.32 out of 5. So, uh, I'd say that's kind of B-plus range. You know, maybe mid-level B-plus. But, Untapped is giving this 3.88 out of 5. And judging by their scale, 4.25, 4.3 is A-plus range for those guys. So I'd say that's a solid A-minus. Let me take another taste. Having drank regular Fort recently, and of being a, an aficionado of high-gravity Dogfish Head beers, I can say this beer, fresh, is better than many of them in the past. I know over the years they they must have gotten better at their craft because I can tell even 120 minute is less hot as time goes by. This isn't that harsh burning that you still get from 120 minute when it's new, but I think in time, this is gonna be a world-class beer with a lot of cellar potential. I'm gonna go, hmm, I think I'm gonna go real high A minus on my scale. I'm gonna go 93. That's the highest high water mark, I think, for A minus. I'd have to double check my scale. Maybe it's 94, but anyway, 93, high A minus on this. It's it's still young, and I think in time the fruit flavors will come up even more as the alcohol integrates in and the beer smooths out, but still quite drinkable now, and this is all I'm going to need tonight for show. So, let's talk about something really important. First, we got to remember to think locally, drink locally. I'm getting it done. Look at the gear and all the freaking beer around me. I'm supporting the craft beer movement. Are you doing your part? Also, oh, if you could do me a big favor, <laughs> and let me know if you've, you've had this, you know, if you like it. So tell me about the quid pro quo. I like the back and forth too, right? Also, if you could do me a big, big favor and rate, comment, subscribe, especially if this is your first time with us. And if you can consider it, you know, do me a little favor, push those YouTube kind of Google and type metrics up and smash that like button because that, along with definitely only one bottle of Fruitful Fort clocking it at 18% ABV. DJ's taking one for the team for you tonight. Is all I'm going to need to put my big ass local drinking happy face on today. So, the next DJ for two, I got nothing hell but a hell of a bunch of Fruitful Fort drinking love for you. And you know what's coming by now. Hell yes, that's right. A big ass. Peace out.